Hey, hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Collection Mania Monday and we're going to take a closer look at the Cadrim colored pencils. Now this set has me perplexed a little bit because after I got the set and was looking at them, somebody pointed out to me that the Cadrim name on the tin, and of course I didn't grab the tin, so you know, Let's see if we can grab the tin. Just one, one second here. But the Cadrum name on the tin is covering another name. So of course I needed to uh, take a look at that. And sure enough, it's a sticker covering a different name. So I looked up the name that it is covering and sure enough they have, so as you can see on the tin here, I've got the Cadrum sticker below it, but it's covering the name Queely or Keely. Um, <clears throat> and they do have a 72 set of colored pencils exactly like with the exact same numbers and everything else like this set. So I think these were renamed for the US market. Um, that's my thoughts on it. I'm not positive and of course I haven't received any information from the company. They also have a 150 set as well. Um, I did look at the 150 set and the numbers that are in the 150 set don't really match up to the numbers that are on this set. So I'm not sure if they're the same pencils or not. But even on the inside, where it says Cadrim here, that's just a sticker and it peels right off. So I think they were renamed for the US market or to, to get more sold one or the other. Um, people may not have liked the Keeley name, so they were renamed. But um, they're very nice pencils. Um, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy the, the colors of these pencils. And I'll take a look with you on the swatch sheet. So I'm going to move the pencils out of the way here for a minute. And I've got the swatch sheet here. And of course I had to put the swatch sheet in this big book. Now on this side is how they come when you get them. So this is the way that they come in the box. And as you can see, the colors are everywhere. So I didn't like that <laughs> whatsoever. So I reorganized them and put them into color families. Now I didn't do an absolutely fantastic job, but I think I did okay. So this is the uh, swatch sheet that we're going to use. I'm going to uh, put you over onto the close-up camera here so that you can see them a little bit better. All right, I'm going to turn that light down just a touch. There we go. All right, so we start, of course, with white, and then we go into the yellows. And it's got a really good selection of yellows. It goes from very pale yellow to an orange yellow. And then into our light oranges, into our peachy colors, orange, and then into our, our this one here should actually be over there. That's a salmon-y kind of color. It should go before 105. And then of course into our, our oranges and reds, into, one sec, let's see if I can do it this way, you know, into our pinks, because moving this book back and forth is, and then into our purples. And this one here, I'm always at a conundrum with this one. Um, it should be up here. It's always in the browns, but I like to keep it in the reds. So it should actually be before this one. 
this one should be down here. Um, you know, into the this one here should be over here. You know, like I said, I didn't do a great job of it, but it was better than it was. Uh, into the blues, into the aqua kind of colors, into the greens, into the aqua greens, and then into your earth greens, your yellow greens, and your your um, more leafy colors, landscape colors. And then we get into the browns and into the grays. Now, one of the things I don't like about this set is this one, this one, this one, and this one are just variations of black. And I'm not very fond of that. Um, I just don't find, I'm quite sure that there's a lot of use for it, but it doesn't really, like this one's got a bit of purple in it. This one's got a bit of blue in it. You know, this one's got a little bit of, I think it's green, and then there's black. But it just doesn't give me at the range of grays that I would like to have seen in the set. Like we've got uh, this uh, pale greeny gray here, and then we have um, a warm gray, and then a... a warmer gray. It doesn't have a lot of cool grays at all. But other than that, it's a fairly nice set of pencils. And they go down beautifully. They lay down color fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to color with these. So we're going to color this wonderful little picture here. Uh, if you remember last Monday, we did create a color, which are these wonderful, wonderful, big, chunky pencils that are just absolutely gorgeous and they lay down so nice all right so let's grab some pencils and we're gonna we used um i'm trying to stick with the same kind of color areas so that uh, we can compare so this one has purples and yellows and blues in it. So I think that's what we'll stick with is the pinks and purples and that sort of thing. So I need number 128, which is this one. And this one. And maybe this one. And then we'll do some purples. Like these ones. And then a couple of blues. And of course some yellow. Because we always need some yellow. Yellow is always good to have in your life. Okay, so. <clears throat> and of course we need some greens for the leaves. And... And 13... And then a dark one, like this one. All right. So we've got all different colors. The the one th another thing that I don't really like about these is yes, they are numbered, which is is fantastic, but they don't really have. Um, the brand name on them. They have artist colored pencils. That's it. They don't have a brand name. They don't have a color name. Um, anything like that. It's it's a very generic, um, basic colored pencil casing. Um, they could have put a little bit more into that. Instead of just putting artist colored pencils, they could have put the CAD rim name on it. Even the Keeley name, something else on it. It does, like I said, have a number, which is great. It does help out with swatching so that you know where your pencils are and what they are without having to, you know, do that yourself. Because that's annoying. All right, so let's get started here. 
We're going to color this pretty little flower in the center with the pinks. And, uh, you know, just a, a side thought, because these are absolutely beautifully pigmented and they are very, very smooth. However, they are a harder pencil. So what that means is that they have a harder wax base or more wax in their base than they do pigment. And as a colorist, um, a lot of times we, we call for and we demand a higher pigmentation and a softer core in our coloring pencils. Now what happens when you put a softer wax in a colored pencil with a higher pigmentation? Uh, the pigmentation is um, the pigment itself, it, the um, powder pigment that they use is water soluble. It's going to dissolve. So when you have more pigment in there than wax, you are going to find that some of your pencils are going to run when you put water on them. And I was thinking about it the other day because I did a response to somebody's video, uh, Color My World's video about certain pencils, uh, you know, basically bleeding when, when you add a, a liquid medium or a spray medium. And I thought about it and it took me, you know, a few days of, of contemplating it and then it hit me. We ask for that. We want these companies to give us a high pigmented, low wax pencil because we like the smooth core. We like the soft pencil. But what we don't realize and what we don't think about when we're, we're asking these companies to do this is what it's going to do to the core of the pencil. You know, if you ask for something that's going to degrade the ability of the pencil, then, you know, you got to, you got to deal with the, the outcome of that. You know, I like my, my pencils nice and soft. I like them highly pigmented. Would I prefer that they be waterproof? Absolutely. But I'm also not going to get really, really mad at a company. Let's say Derwent. Uh, Derwent is a, a long-term company that have had their pencils on the market for eons. But they're not water-soluble. They're not supposed to be water soluble. However, if you put water on something you've colored with a Derwent pencil, especially the highly pigmented ones like the reds, the, you know, things like that, that have a lot more pigmentation to them to get to the color that you're, that you're seeing, it's going to bleed a little. It's an unfortunate thing and it happens. Absolutely. And, you know, should it happen? No. But do I, you know, blame the company 100% for that? Not really. Um, because as colorists, we're asking for it. That's what we're asking them to do. We're telling them we want it to be more pigmented. We're telling them that we want um, a smoother pencil and this, that, and the other thing. So in, in actuality, is it the company's fault or is it the customer's fault for the things that we're asking them to do? I'm going to change it here just a touch and give you a bit better focus because I'm, it may just be my glasses are, are dirty because it looked a little blurry to me. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit better too. There you go. But, you know, that's just my thoughts on it is, you know, 
what happens to a pencil when you change the formulation to add the pigmentation, the, um, the things that we're all asking for constantly, the, the sm soft pencil, the smooth pencil, the highly pigmented pencil. Is it, uh, you know, something that we've, we've constantly asked for that is causing this problem with some of the, the brands? That's my question of the day is, is it something we've asked for that is, is done this to these pencils? I know, a little deep. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was my, my thoughts on it. Um, I, absolutely, I don't think that they should be bleeding that way. And I would rather they didn't. But when you when you constantly ask for a higher pigmentation you gotta you gotta understand that pigmentation is what's in your pencil uh, you know the more pigmentation they put in the less binding they can put in the softer the pencil the softer the binding you know so if that pigment isn't bound it's going it's going to run you know, it's just the nature of the beast, in my opinion. You know, it, it's just logic. You know, it's just thinking logically, um, as well as looking at the logistics of things is, and that sort of thing is, you know, people are upset with, with Arteza for not pulling these pencils off the market. And, uh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Well, it's not just Arteza it's a lot of different companies have the same problem. You know, Derwent, nobody yelled at Derwent. Derwent is one of the companies that bled pretty bad. But because they are a artist grade company that's been around a lot longer, you know, um, they don't seem to catch as much flack, I guess. But, you know, it's, it's, I just thought about it logically and looked at it logically and thought, we asked for it. You know, that's what, what we're always asking for. If you ask any colorist what they want in a pencil, they want a, a well pigmented, soft pencil. I know that's what I asked for in a pencil. I want it well pigmented and nice and smooth. I, I don't want a stutter. I don't want, you know, a drag. I want a nice smooth pencil. You know, so that when I go across a piece of paper, I'm not hearing scratch, 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 scratch. Or, you know, anything like that. That I'm getting a good quality color out of it and that comes at a price but with these ones we're going to get back to the CAD rooms now as you can see the pinks laid down absolutely beautifully I was able to blend the red into the yellow to create a, a beautiful orange and um, you know the purples went down very very nicely I'm going to do the greens of these flowers uh, flower leaves now and of course I'm putting down my dark first because I want the light to brighten it up now most people put down light first and then go to dark it depends upon what I want to come out of the color on which one I put down first if I want the lights to take over that dark and make it brighter, I will put down the dark first. And with um, grayscale, I'll put down the dark first. All right, so I'm gonna do 
I think I grabbed the wrong pencil here because that is an awfully purple pencil for it to have a blue tip. So we'll just change the color of it. So as you can see, <clears throat> you can easily blend colors together with these pencils to create a new color. Um, that is a very pale purple and then I'm just going to go over it with this blue just to tone down this bright blue and mix that together and we have a lighter blue make sure you don't press too hard otherwise you're going to kill the tooth of your paper I have difficulties with that because of the surface that I'm coloring on is really, really soft. So it doesn't feel like I'm pressing hard enough on the paper <laughs> because I'm not feeling the, sur the solid surface underneath it. And that's why I use my cutting board all the time because it has a nice solid feel to it. And I don't have to... Uh, I don't feel like I'm, I'm pressing as, ha as hard as I um, end up pressing here without it. The cab rims are a wax-based pencil. Um, they are, like I said, extremely well pigmented. They are nice and soft, but still sturdy enough to hold that point for quite some time. So you're not constantly having to sharp, resharpen your pencils, which is one thing that I really, really like. I sharpen all my pencils to a very, 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 very tight point um, because that's just the way I like to color with them. I like to have that, that tight point on my pencils. Now I'm just going to go back over it with this light purple and just blend it in a little bit and make sure that it's covering all the points of the flower. And then I'm going to take the darkest purple I have out and I'm just going to go in and do the and typically you would have done that first. Um, however, because I messed up on the color, I did it second. And we're going to do the leaves. And we're going to go over the leaves with a lighter green. Now, if you find that your lighter green is too a little bit too light, it's not giving you that look that you want, just take your dark green and put in a little bit more definition to the leaf. And then blend it in with that lighter green. So because I, I feel that there is a little bit too bright, and of course I could have just grabbed a different pencil, but all you, if you just um, put in a little bit more um, of the darker color, that light will pick up that the light areas that you want it to pick up, but it will also blend that darker color in and and add a different coloring as well. So of course, you know, you can definitely grab a different pencil and, you know, just add a different color, but you don't have to. I think is what I'm trying to say. It's Monday. <laughs> I've had a lot of time to think this weekend. It's, it's, a, it's a, sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. I actually got to color an entire picture 
this weekend. I was quite surprised. I actually finished an entire picture. I was quite happy with that. Now, of course, we are going to use a blending pencil on this just to show you how well it blends with the with the blending pencil. And then we will do a bit of a background as well. Now, I forgot to do the center of this flower. And the connectors. And there we go. All right, so that is using all of those different pencils. The only two I haven't used are these two, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to actually use them for the background as well as I need the blender pencil so this is the Caran d'Ache uh, blender pencil I'm going to give it a sharpen because I used it quite a bit yesterday to blend out the picture I was working on and because this is such a small tight area I want to have a good tight point on that. And you can do that. Um, I use my, my doll 133 to sharpen my pencil. So, and I've never had any problems with it sharpening it. So, and as you can see, just using the blender pencil does give those leaves a nice, bright, clean look. These pencils do seem to blend really, really nicely. You can get a nice smooth look out of them, which is really, really nice. Now, I understand that people use a lot of mixed media um, when doing their work, but a lot of these budget-friendly pencils, like the Cadrams and that sort of thing, yes, they say they're an artist quality pencil, However, they don't say that uh, they are light fast. They don't say that you should be using them in your professional works because they're the best. You have to choose wisely, especially if you're, you're using these for professional reasons. You know, if you're, if you're coloring for... Uh, for money or you know as your job make sure that you research the the products before you you buy a product make sure that it's going to do what you want it to do i don't put my my colorings um out where they're going to get a lot of sunlight so light fast rating to me doesn't mean a whole lot but to somebody that does professional coloring or sells their their artwork it means a lot because that that artwork is going to be hanging on a wall somewhere or a poster board or something and if it doesn't have a good light fast rating it may end up being very very grayed out within a short period of time which is not what they want and it's not what they what their customer has paid for so all right so we're just going to finish this up okay and unfortunately my phone is ringing so i will let it go to voicemail and whoever it is can leave me a message. Okay, okay, so that is all done. So as you can see, the purples are very, very co close to the uh, color. 
as well as up here in the castle arts. The castle arts, I've used a little bit more of a pinky purple than down here. Uh, the art and fly is a really nice co uh, comparison as well. All of these pencils are budget friendly pencils. Um, very few of them are expensive, like the Black Widows and the Brunzeals. The Brunzeals, I think, are the most expensive that I have on this sheet. Well, used to be the most expensive I have on this sheet. Now it's the Arteza. And I understand that, you know, people really don't, aren't very happy with the Arteza right now and whatnot. But, and I don't know what they've changed in them or if they've changed anything. Another thing is, is you got to remember, we're in the middle of a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. So the ability to have people working in the factories and everything else making new pencils might not be a possibility where they make their pencils. So they may be putting out old stock because we're all home coloring and buying it. So in order to um, take care of the demand, they're pulling from whatever they have stored up, stored up. And it could be pencils from two, three, four, five, six years ago, depending upon what they have stored in their warehouses. So I can't really say where, when these pencils were made or where they're made or anything like that. All I can say is that my set does beautifully and I absolutely love it. And that's all that matters to me. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's true. Um, the Brunzeals do beautifully, and they are a light, fast um, artist quality, and they state that they're an artist quality. They do have lower qualities as well as higher qualities um, of pencils. So when you go to a company that has different levels in their pencils, that uh, that does give you an idea of the fact that, yeah, they you can be covered as a student, you can be covered as, as a colorist, you can be covered as a full artist with this brand. Um, the Black Widows are really nice. Um, I don't use those a whole lot. I love the way they lay down, but sometimes some of their colors just, I just don't, know about them. <laughs> I have to play with them some more and to get a better feel of them. Uh, the Blick Studios are an absolutely gorgeous pencil. They lay down beautifully. This one here is in a pencil. <laughs> uh, the Brute Funers, both square and round, are one of my favorites. I have had the Brute Funer rounds since I started coloring. Probably about three months after I started coloring, I got those. And the Square Butte Funers, they're just as nice as the regular ones. Um, and yeah, they're square. I, I just love that. Um, yeah, it's a aesthetic thing. It's nothing to, it has absolutely nothing to the way that it colors or anything else. It is purely aesthetic. But it's a cool aesthetic. Of course, Castle Art Studios, wonderful pencils absolutely wonderful pencils they lay down beautifully they are very smooth and of course as you can see they produce a fantastic blend of colors uh, the saison also another um, wonderful pencil that did very well with their blending I was able to put several different colors in a small area and still be able to blend them all together and see the different variations without um, seeing the blend lines, which is really nice. Uh, the Cool Bank, also another very, very nice pencil. I like the 72 set. I wasn't overly fond of the 160 set or the 120 set. Hopefully they have um, changed that a little bit. I haven't bought them since I had some problems with them, 
but hopefully um, they've changed that and at some point I will buy a bigger set and try them out again. It may have just been a horrible batch that I got into. So I will try those again, possibly after the pandemic uh, settles down and we actually get our manufacturing back to where it should be and our, our um, imports back to where they should be. Uh, the Creative Colors are a mega pencil and for a very large pencil, this is a very small area. And it got into the smallest of the areas. Like I'm going to grab my, my ruler here just to give you an idea of how, of how small this area is. This picture is only two inches wide by one and a half inches tall. So very, very, very tight areas did very well with the details for the size of the pencil. The core in this pencil is 6.7 millimeters, but they lay down beautifully and they give some fantastic, absolutely fantastic effects. It's not a huge set, but it, it is definitely big enough to do what we need it to do. Now we're back to the CAD room and we're going to put a nice little yellow um, background on here and we're starting off with our lightest yellow and I will go in to those darker areas with a dark yellow as well Okay, so we started off with our lightest yellow and then we're going to take our medium yellow and we're going to go into right into that light yellow a bit and bring that out just a touch. And what I want to see is I want to see um, continuous gradient effect between these three different yellow pencils. So in the areas where I've put the light yellow and I'm putting this darker yellow, I want to be able to see that gradients, that, that motion of going from light to dark. just to make sure I have enough of that light there. Okay, so now we're going to add our really, really dark yellow. And we're not going to put a whole lot of this. We're just going to put a little bit on the ends all the way around. And then we're going to go in to some of these really, really, really tight areas and just add a little bit of dark shadowing. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the light areas in the center. We've got the dark areas out uh, as you go out. You start with your blending in your light area and move it outwards. And go outwards with your blending so that you're pushing that, that color outwards into the dark colors. so that you don't muddy up your, your lighter colors. And 
and then just at the very edge here just soften that edge a little bit and don't do that <laughs> I keep on catching myself doing it don't don't use your hand Oh, just so you all know, if you don't already, the Square Brute Funers, since we were just talking about them, um, are back at on Amazon, and they do have an 8% off coupon that you can uh, add to that. Of course, um, the link uh, to those is on the Brute Funer uh, videos so if you want to take a look at that as well that'd be cool I will leave of course the links to the CAD room and the um, blender pencil and that sort of thing in the comments below so as you can see um, need my brush it did a gradual blend quite nicely another way that you can blend these of course is with a um, alcohol marker try to make sure that you don't have anything dark on your marker otherwise it will transfer and you can just bring it out now of course this is what I was talking about is you know if you can blend a pencil with an alcohol marker you can guarantee that if you poured water on this that pencil is going to bleed you know it's picking up onto the marker and what that is is just a breakdown of the pigmentation because it's a pencil that we have asked or it's a company that knows that our col the colorist community wants their pencils highly pigmented. We asked for it, people. <laughs> That's all I could say. Um, anyway, I do thank you all very much for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, video and enjoyed the Cadrim colored pencils. We have actually finished this um, entire picture. Just want to switch you over there so you can see the whole thing. So we have actually colored the entire picture. So I will have to print off a new one for the next group of colors. And with Cadrim, I'm actually going to put what it says on the tin as well. Now, if you want to take a look, I will also leave the uh, links to the Quili because they do have a 150 set as well as the 72 set. So if you um, already have the Cadrim pencils and you enjoy them but want a bigger set, um, you can find that bigger set with the Quili um 150 set so i will leave a link for those as well all in all fantastic pencil the only problems i i have found so far um are that there are no um variation marks uh, no defining marks on the pencil of what brand it is also no um color name whatsoever it's just got a color number which lucky for them they have a color number because then it would have been three strikes <laughs> on on the presentation uh the colors themselves are very vivid they're very bright um they are well pigmented and very smooth i have not found a scratchy pencil in any of them and on top of it all one of the colors that uh, I used in the picture that I colored yesterday was this pencil. 
and this pencil is mixed in with Derwent. Uh, so they blend it beautifully into uh, Derwent pencils as well. So just so you know, they do blend with other artist grade pencils. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So please leave me a like. It does help me um, know what content you guys are enjoying better than others. Uh, leave me a comment because I, I always love hearing from you guys. And of course, I do enjoy, you know, um, making sure that I answer all of those comments. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Um, ring the bell. I do put out a video every single day. Um, I have been having some problems with my computer for the past couple of days. So hopefully it won't interrupt my, my uh, videos. But if it does, uh, I do apologize and I will try to come on and leave a very quick little live video uh, letting you know when my computer will be back up and running. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. And I, of course, will see you tomorrow for Tips and Tricks Tuesday. And, uh, of course, remember to relax, color, and stay safe. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.